Hi, my name is Dave, and today we're going to look at three 90mm Maksutov telescopes. Let's take a look at the Mead ETX. This ETX dates from the uh, about 1999-1998, something like that. So it's one of the first uh, of the ETX that came off the assembly line. And it happens to have uh, absolutely superb optics. I have compared this with the uh, Questar, and the Questar is, a, of course, perfect. This one is also really close to perfect, if not absolutely perfect. The optics are, uh, I would say, identical for all practical considerations. Uh, you can see that it's um, it's got a metal. This is metal here, and this is metal, and there are some other metal components, but the rest is all plastic, unlike the... Um, Unlike the Questar, it's just, uh, there's a lot of plastic here. But it's it's trying very hard to be a poor man's Questar, and I think it succeeds in many respects. Uh, it does have a clock drive, and you can, uh, there's a, unfortunately you have to pull off the whole base here to change the battery, but uh, you can put a battery in there, and you've got a clock drive, and it's not bad. It's, uh, the mechanics on this thing are nowhere near up to Questar standards. This You have to remember, this sold for about a tenth of the price of a Questar, so really, really inexpensive uh, compared to the Questar, at least. And a very nice, uh, it's got some of the very nice attributes, the size and, and so forth is very similar to the Questar in that respect. Um, and here's how you focus this, and just like the Questar, you're moving the back mirror forward and backwards in the tube, and it turns out that with a Maxuto like this, a very slight motion of the mirror really makes a dramatic difference in the focus. Uh, so you can focus this thing pretty darn close, actually, I believe 20 feet or so, uh, to infinity, of course, and with, with most eyepieces. Uh, here's your locking mechanism, and it's got a little sort of a tangent arm inside there, so this is your uh, declination slow motion. This one here is, this is the lock, and you can notice <laughs> it's, it's awkward. <laughs> one of the things about these ETXs is they're just awkward. They're kind of like, if you had fingers that were that long, you'd be fine. But it's, uh, they're little tiny parts in odd places and things. Anyway, so there you lock it down, and here's your slow motion. It's got one of those friction slow motion deals. And when you engage this, it takes about, it may take, 20 seconds for the clock drive to catch up and actually sort of engage for the, to take the play out of the gears. So it's a bit of a challenge in that respect. You know, in the Quest R, it's like, it's like driving Rolls Royce, but uh, this is not a Rolls Royce. This is <laughs> certainly not, not quite up to those standards. Although, uh, if you're patient, the images through this scope can be quite good also. Let me show you something else about this scope. The finder here, it's got a cute little right angle finder. Isn't that cute? And the placement of that finder is awful, just awful. You're supposed to be able to put an eyepiece in here, right? And then look through there. Well, it turns out that in most cases, unless you're standing on your head or hanging from the ceiling or something, you can't look through that eyepiece because this thing's in the way. So you're gonna bounce your head off of it or whatever. I finally, I totally gave up on that completely. And uh, it turns out that you can buy an adapter. This unscrews back here, much like the Questar. And here's an adapter you can put on. And this adapter, of course, you could use this adapter for cameras. But more importantly, you can put a an inch and a quarter focus in there, or an inch and a quarter diagonal, and now you can use it like that, which is much more convenient. Unless you were trying to look real close to the pole, this thing won't, with that configuration, you won't be able to look very close to the pole. But in many cases, you know, I'm a planetary and lunar observer anyway, so I'm going to be, uh, it's going to be in that kind of a position anyhow for me. Um, you have to refocus it, of course, but no big deal. That works uh, pretty darn well. And it's just like with the Quest Star, you can mount this on the tabletop. Uh, this, it's got a, it's got a quarter inch 20 threaded slot there, so you could put this right on a tripod if you want to. As a matter of fact, if your tripod tilts, 
you're good. You, and you can just uh, set that up for equatorial. You can also do this. Much like with a quest star, you put these guys in. See how much it's trying to look like a quest star? I'm a little surprised they didn't go ahead and paint the, uh, you know, make a dew shield with with uh, constellations on it like the quest star did. Quest star did have a paint finish that was very similar to this. It's a real pretty sort of iridescent blue color. Um, anyway, now you've got uh, a tabletop. Boy, oh boy, just like a real honest goodness quest star almost for a tenth of the price. And with the Mead ETX, this is also, this is not easy. But if you have the right size Allen wrench and a pretty good dose of patience, you can remove this from its little mount. Okay, I've removed four little um, set screws to hold it and now the thing will slide right up. It's a little uh, The first time I did this it scared the heck out of me because it, it's plastic and you have to actually spring the forks a little bit to get this darn thing out of here <coughs> There we go, there's one, there's the other Okay Nice feeling of security when you do that one of these days that plastic stuff is all gonna break uh, I tend not to do that <laughs> very often. It's not a daily deal for me. But now you've got a nice little, um, very portable uh, spotting scope. Uh, you could mount this. This has got a couple of quarter inch 20 bolt holes there. So you could mount this. You can put an image erecting eyepiece back here uh, to the adapter. And you're good to go. It's a very, very nice little spotting scope. This is a C90 telescope. Okay, this one dates from the, uh, probably from the 80s uh, or the 70s, and it's a classic little 90 millimeter Max Sutov. It's got a beautiful set of optics. The optics here are nearly perfect. Very much I've compared it with a Quest Star uh, that is uh, actually quite perfect, and this thing is almost as good. You're near the house. Um, nice and very precise clock drive, very nice precise declination, here's your declination lock, very much like a C8, if you're familiar with how a C8 works, very much like that. So you loosen it up, you can aim it at wherever you want, lock it down, then you've got a little tangent arm. So very nice, very robust, I love this casting, it's super, super robust, just what you need. And it's got, you've even got a nice setting circle here. Um, the little finder is the focus right here. This is focused like you would focus a uh, a telephoto. As a matter of fact, it's essentially a telephoto lens. Um, and the the way you focus here by twisting the whole tube that is for somebody that's into astronomy that's that's a pain. It does work, but it's oh, it's very very awkward. It also uh, used. 965 eyepieces. This is not the one that Celestron made. I'd like to have that one if I can get a hold of it. it this is not that one. This is a um, an aftermarket item made by JMI. Okay, so here we have a little quarter inch 20 bolt. Slides right on there like that. Now you've got a tabletop style mount very much like what you'd have with the uh, the Questar same kind of features I have a I have a detailed video that shows all the features of this beautiful Questar telescope I uh, hope you will take a few minutes and check that out I hope you've enjoyed my tour of these three 90 millimeter telescopes thank you for watching